Welcome back to Close to Broke. Wow, I am super overexposed. And it's because this light behind me. Pretty exciting day for you all. We're heading over to the Commerce. There's a, I don't know, like six, five, ten games going with 14 names on the board. Probably a good side of good things to come. So, I've got to get over there as soon as I can. It's about 8.45 on a Sunday. So, hopefully there's some good action that awaits us. Thank you guys so much for the constant support on these videos. That's enough of the hoopla. Let's get into today's episode. Fired all of the bullets Yeah, you shot me through the heart Casting dice and roulette Really, really excited to put together today's episode. It's a ton of fun. The table is actually a really good time, which is hard to say for most poker sessions in the public setting, but let's get into the episode. In this very first hand here, there's an early position limp to $10. We're playing 5, 10, 15 on our max at the Commerce Casino. Been a little while since I've been here. It seems like most of the Euros are actually packed up bags and gone back home for the holidays, except for this one. I decided to isolate to $40 with pocket fours here next to act as well as late position and that limper make the call we're going four ways off to a flop with a pretty shitty hand that comes ace ten three with two hearts at first glance i thought that there was a four on the window but after taking a second look no that's definitely a three with the action checked over to me i think that i should definitely be just checking here it's really bad to see bet these flops with a hand like pocket fours. I don't even have a heart as a saving grace, um, but I guess I'm just going to be see betting range here. Four ways just feels like an atrocity. Either way, I throw 40 or $50 into the abyss. Next to act calls, everyone else folds, and the turn card comes the ace of hearts. Brings in that front door flush. At this point, I'm pretty happy to be over with the hand. I check it over to my opponent. He bets 75, and that'll do it. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this hand here. Moving on to the next one. Well, I feel a little better about myself. Glass half full. Moving along here, I look down at Ace Queen offsuit here from early position. I raise the thirty-five dollars. Friend of the vlog, Justin makes a call here from the button. The flop comes seven deuce deuce. Unfortunately, the seven deuce game is not on here, so I'm gonna go ahead and pretty credibly remove it from the ranges of myself or him. I decide to see bet range here for twenty-five dollars. Continuing to see bet makes sense as I do that probably with aces and kings as well. I make it a down bet here to twenty-five dollars. Justin pretty quickly makes a call. The turn card comes a beautiful ace of clubs saved by the bell. With the action on me now, I think it's important to start betting for value, but it's really hard to get called by a ton of hands as my opponent won't have a great deal of really strong hands here. So I decided to throw out a bet of $40. He pretty quickly decides to make the fold, so fairly anticlimactic, but happy to take it down. Things are going along fairly well. I actually think that this is a really fun table to be at. There's a couple of solid, you know, tighter players, winning players, of course. Feels like people are playing fairly ABC and allowing me to play my game, or at least whatever the hell I think that is, because even I barely have a grasp on that. Either way, in this very next hand, early position makes it $40 to go. Folds to me in the big blind. I look down at 9-3 of spades here. Any suited hand from the big blind heads up. I don't mind defending. So... I go ahead and make the call here, and the flop comes Jack-8-7 Rainbow. I know pretty clearly here that this is significantly better for my range than his, and if he C-bets here, I feel pretty comfortable and a little bit of a devious intentions in my mind. I check it over to him, and he throws out a C-bet to $25. Now, our opponent can have a good hand here, but I think I'm going to have a ton of really good hands here, especially on a board texture like this. There's no flush draws. I shouldn't be over bluffing in this spot. Little does he know that I have 9-3 of spades here. I decide to throw out the old raise here. A little bit of a weaselly play. I make it $90 to go. He pretty quickly makes a call. We're going off to a turn card that comes the five of hearts. Great. This is going to allow me to barrel a lot. And the reason being is now I pick up another gut shot. The old double gutter. The double belly buster. We love the sound of that. We love the sight of that. I want to put my opponent in a maximum, maximum pressure situation. I'm deciding to go near the size of the pot by betting $250. Our opponent goes deep into the tank well over a minute and you can see this is definitely something that is bothering him he's going back and forth i think at this juncture it's fairly clear whatever the river comes i've got a blast if it's good for me if it's bad for me i've just got to put him to the test and luckily it won't come to it he ends up letting his hand go relinquishing it to the dealer good hand to me good hand to you sir moving on this next hand ends up being quite the odd one as there's a little bit of confusion here I've been straddling or blind raising to $20 for a couple of orbits now. And I decided to bring it up to the table. Hey, what do you guys think about a $20 blind raise situation for a round? 
Most people seem to like it except for one player as there is always that player. Nothing wrong with it to each their own, but I'm still going to straddle. I want to make the, big, the game more fun. I want to make it bigger. It's a blind raise. You know, what else do I need to sell you on? The next player decides to make the call and another gentleman decides to make the call as well. And it gets over to the small blind and the other gentleman realizes that it's not a bomb pot and he's trying to figure out what the heck's going on here. He's like, oh, I thought we were playing a $20 bomb pot. We reassure him that no, it is actually in fact a $20 blind raise. Anyways, we decide to kind of honor it as an impromptu bomb pot five ways as both blinds call as well. I don't have an option, so we're going off to a flop that comes ace, ace, seven. With the action checked over to me, I looked down at my hand and we have an, a monster actually. We have pocket tens here. Granted, it is a paired board. There are two over cards, paired variety, that are better than pocket tens, but I feel like betting here for value is not a bad thing to do. So I decided to bet out for around about the half size of the pot and make it $50. Only the small blind makes the call. And we're going off to a turn card that comes a queen of clubs here. Brings a backdoor flush draw, as well as the simple fact that there's yet another card that is over my pocket tens. He checks it to me, and I'm pretty happy to get the showdown at this point. I check it back. The river card comes a six of hearts here. Doesn't change very much at all. At this point, my opponent decides to lead out for $75. Look, I don't think people are bluffing enough here. I think there's a really small chance that my opponent can actually be, you know, value betting worse. Like nines, eights, or maybe in a seven. And if that's the case, coupled with maybe the off chance that our opponent can be turning a hand like King High into a bluff, I decided to throw out the call here. We've got to give some action, right? Wrong. Our opponent shows Ace-8 offsuit, so good hand to you, sir. Unfortunate for us there, but I think the best play here would have just been to check the flop, and at that way, maybe we lose even more. Maybe he bets bigger on the turn and whatever, but I think at the end of the day, the best thing to do there is just to check and allow our opponents to bluff if they care to do so. Congratulations, you gentlemen. Yo, I'm, I'm I'm only here with the third place uh, thank you, US thank you. or US. Came in third. Came in third tonight. I thought you were gonna right. get the I thought you were gonna get the, the chip. That was was up for grabs. I was so close. So close. Hey, he ran into kings, so I ran into nines, so coolers all around. Coolers, coolers all, all around. around. But hey, you know the coolest thing about it is I know Kieran, so ha. Yeah. Ha. ha. See too Kyro loves you. Kyro loves you. Kyro does love you. Love you. Subscribe, like, comment and uh tell kieran he needs to play low stakes with us <laughs> yeah for sure that'd be awesome we're close to broke game yeah let's let's get my guy right here how do we zoom in on the very next shuffle we pick up yet another playable hand there's a 20 dollar blind raise on under the gun makes it a limp two late position players decide to limp there's now quite a bit of dead money in the middle or at least in my eyes there is when we wake up with ace three of hearts in the big blind i decided to throw out an isolation a raise to 150 dollars only the under the gun limper calls not too worried about that don't know what limp calls 150 dollars from under the gun that's very strong but alas we are going off to a flop that comes king jack jack i decided to throw out a seabed here of 90 dollars on a board that is paired it's pretty imperative to go pretty small here. Don't really need to polarize myself all that much here. It's not a four bet pot or anything crazy. Our opponent can call with a wide range, which he does. We're going off to a turn card that comes a king of hearts. Interesting as it now makes a double poured, bared, poured. Oh my God, English is just escaping me today. The board is double paired. I decided to check it over to my opponent as I don't think I'd be C-betting or double barreling with very many holdings at all. He decides to take over the betting reins and throws out a bet of $120. I think that we can fold sometimes, but against a sizing like this with how much money is already in the middle, I don't know. I'm feeling a little fishy. The one thing that I have to notice, and it's probably hard to tell from the video, but our opponent was attempting to bet $130, but he did it in a very weak fashion and in a stringy fashion. As he threw out the 121st and attempted to throw one extra chip and then another extra chip, and the dealer notified him that that was a string bet. Nothing wrong, I don't feel like this was an angle, but what it was, I did catch a pretty credible live read. I did feel as though my opponent was fairly weak, the way he was manipulating the chips and specifically the way he threw out those extra two chips after he made his initial bet made it feel like he was really confused as what he was just doing, if that makes any sense. At this point, because I have no prior history with this player, it could be a monster. He could have quads for all I know, or he could have seven high. Either way, I decide to make the call and to see how the foreseeable future can come in my favor. Nothing changes on this river that comes a five of diamonds. And at this point, I checked over to my opponent with the intention to call any bet. Or at least that's what I was thinking on the churn. If any club or any straighty card comes, obviously I think I can 
consider making the fold and most likely make the fold. But on a river, this bricky, I'm here to strap it up and just play. Wait, wait. Oh, he just checks back. Thought about it for a long time. Granted, he did not find it with him to pull the trigger, but the pot is coming my way. Ace high is a nuts. Quite some time has passed from the last hand to this hand. Early position decides to limp for $10. Another early position player decides to isolate that person to $50. And I look down at ace 10 of spades here from the big blind. We can definitely throw in the old three bet here, but honestly, playing passive seems okay. I decided to just make the call here. Out of position's never fun to do or to be a part of a hand post flop out of position, but our hand's fairly strong. And we're going off to a very, very good flop that comes 10, 3, 6 with two diamonds. There is a spade out there. We have backup if we need it. I decided to check it over to the initial razor. He decides to throw out a C-bet of $50. I make the call, limper folds, and the turn card comes to five of hearts. At this point, I'm not really worried about straights as I doubt our opponent, or specifically this one, is doing anything crazy with anything crazy. I check it over to him and he decides to eventually check it back. So at this point, I feel like I have the effect of nuts here, hoping to miss fade any face cards on the river to prevent getting value. And it does come just that as it pairs the board with the three of hearts. At this point, I'm thinking what I should do here. I've definitely taken some advice from people that have mentioned, hey, maybe you shouldn't bet that big on the river. But just because I take that advice doesn't mean I'll implement it. Uh, to be fair, I actually have some backstory or back history against this specific opponent. We've definitely played in the past before, and he's definitely seen me make a move or two going big, big, big on the river. So it's important to do so when I have a good hand. I decided to throw out a bet of $225. The one thing I will say, though, that was going on through my mind at that time was, hey, maybe if I use the smaller chips, it looks weaker because I'm putting out more chips to do the reverse reverse by making it look stronger because there's a more amount of chips out there. I don't know if that plays anything. If it does, let me know in the comment section below. Do you think it's usually indicative of weakness when people use more chips to put out a bet? Does it not matter whatsoever? I don't know. What's your take on it? Our opponent goes into the think tank before eventually deciding. On a call, we show our hand and it is good. Let's go. Ship another one to Papa. By this point, things are going well for us here. We're getting paid off and we're not getting caught in many bluffs. This following hand, the hijack makes it $35 to go. I find myself on the bun with Queen and a Clubs. I'm a sucker for queen nine of clubs. I make the call. The small blind calls as well. We're going off to a flop that is really, really reasonable as it comes king, jack, deuce with two clubs. We flop ourselves a gut shot as well as a flush draw. Our opponent decides to throw out a C bet of $55. I make the call. Small blind folds and the turn card comes a jack of hearts. Not great as it pairs a board. And when our opponent decides to bet $105, I ask myself, what are the likelihood that I can get my opponent to fold to a bluff on the river if it comes down to it and how likely is it that if i do make my hand can i get called if it comes to it if we do make our hand i think there is a reasonable chance we can get called our opponent's gonna have a ton of double barrels that include really decent value like ace king king queen and our opponent will also have a bunch of complete air balls or not air balls but miss gut shots like ace queen or queen 10 Although I do double block that, but our opponent can also have a hand like ace 10 of clubs because we don't even block that or ace 10 of hearts or ace 10 of spades. Either way, I make the call and the river card comes a seven of hearts. But unfortunately for us, it does not improve us in any way here. And we found ourselves on a river with quite a bit of money in the middle with queen high. Out of the blue, our opponent decides to check. This is a little bit of a surprise to me. Sure, our opponent can be checking to control the size of the pot, but... At the end of the day, I have queen high here and my hands are tied. I've got to go for it. I've just, there's too much money in the middle to not at least attempt to get the money shipped in my direction. I throw out a bet of $250 looking to get hands like pocket jacks or pocket tens to fold, as well as obviously a hand like ace high. The last thing I want to do is check it back and get shown ace high. So I throw out that bet and our opponent doesn't think about it very long before eventually deciding on a fold. Today's just one of those sessions where everyone's doing exactly what you need them to do. So feels good. All of this culminating to the last hand of today's session. I find myself in early position with ace three of hearts here. I decide to race at $35. Next to act makes the call, middle position, and the button make the call. We're going way too many ways to a flop that comes ace, eight, four, rainbow. Flopping top pair is outstanding. Flopping top pair out of position at three other players, not so much, especially when you have no kicker. I decided to use this as a check. It checks over to the middle position player who decides to throw out a bet here of $60. 
The action gets folded back to me. I throw out the call, and the player to my left decides to call as well. We're going three ways off to a turn card that comes with four of diamonds. Doesn't change a whole lot here. It allow me, if I need to, to suck out on the river if it decides to pair. The action ends up checking through, and the river card comes a really good jack of diamonds. The board is not looking very scary, and I think there is a small chance I can get called by a worse hand. I decide to throw or utilize the old blocker bet. I make it $20 to go. I'm looking to target a hand specifically like King Jack X or 8 9 something in that ballpark, a middling pair. And I can allow my opponents to or at least induce them to bluff if I can get a read like that. Or, obviously, if our opponents raise, there's a great chance that I'm actually here with the worst hand. Either way, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I throw out a bet of $20. The opponent to my left thinks about it for a moment before deciding to make the call. The middle position player decides to eventually fold. I show my hand, and it is, in fact, good. It, it feels crazy for this entire session to say it is good. The pot is being pushed my way. But to be quite fair, we played for about three hours or three and a half hours. And just like every pot came in our direction, whether we were bluffing and we didn't get called or we were value betting and we did get value, things just worked out in our favor. It's been a while since we felt a session like that, but it feels good nonetheless. And all that being said, it's now starting to rain. So let's throw it out to me by the car to let you guys know how things went. Well, 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 it's actually raining out today. Why even point that out? We live in Los Angeles, we're in a drought. I think this is actually good for us. The screen is getting a little foggy, so let's, uh... We were into today's game for 15 and out for 25-35, which is not too bad. I cannot complain about the outcome of that. We played pretty meh, but uh, it's easy when people just keep folding to your bluff. So pretty happy with the way things turned out for today's session. Not a whole lot of craziness to really unfold, find a way to get value in a, tough, a ton of tough spots to get value. And uh, all of our timely bluffs were just that, very timely. So just wanna thank you guys so much for coming through and enjoying the videos. If you guys could do me the favor and click a like on today's video, it would go a very long way. It's raining quite a bit. At least in LA, this is like pretty much a storm considering how or what we're used to. I hope you guys have a lovely day. Stay happy, selfie, and more importantly, we're gonna the tables. Again, click on the links in the description if you guys ever wanna play with me on the Splash Squads. If you guys are interested in checking out the podcast, that's wonderful as well. Let me know who you guys would like to see me have on the podcast. Otherwise, just have a great day. Thank you guys so much for watching and uh, happy Thanksgiving. I think today's Thanksgiving. If you don't celebrate it, I'm thankful for you guys anyways. Have a wonderful day. See you guys soon.